Hi, I'm Rob, 2 Echo Zero, Romeo Papatango. Um, just doing another video. Uh, I've uh, brought Ban Hamnet UK. Uh, broadband uh, Hamnet help website that I've been building and how to's and things like that. And what I'm showing you at the moment, if I can hold it still is my setup um, this is the setup that I've I've got uh, you can see my my phone line feeds uh, H high speed DSL fiber to the cabinet unit which goes into my BT hub 3 I've ditched the hub 5 it's got problems so I've gone back to the hub 3 um, I'm not losing out on anything other than because I don't have any 5 gig Wi-Fi, it's no point me going to the Hub 5, it, the one they sent me is broken, but anyway, moving on. There's a couple of ports that are being used on there, one goes to a firewall, QoS and NAT, in via the WAN port, and the LAN port feeds another DDWRT router. Now what I do is, these DDWRT routers, uh, this one is the uh, D-Link uh, D615, DIR615, probably can't focus on that, but um, I've got two of those. Um, one is here on my uh, diagram, and the other one is up there. So... Um, this Wi-Fi over here I'm using um, goes to my neighbours so it goes through this box so it has quality of service and it puts them behind uh, a NAT their own firewall and that does mean the, the way this is configured which I won't be covering in this video they'll only ever pull one address off my Hub 5 and they can go full speed unless I want to and then I get more speed than they do the other output from the BT Hub 3, that should say, goes into the WAN port of my uh, GS105E Netgear router, which has been VLAN to supply internet from port 5 to nodes 1 and 2. Uh, the LAN ports, um, LAN 1 for node 1 and LAN 1 no two, um, so it's a single LAN port, one for that one, one for that one. Um, I've got my Raspberry Pi running free PBX, going into one which goes up to my uh, Nano station, and everything else plugged into my switch, um, like my file server, my laptop, and things to get broadband hamnet service off of the other one which is my air grid so what I'm going to cover in this video is this one here uh, the Wi-Fi access point uh, to my wireless devices including phones and tablets and that because these devices they're wireless um, but you can't connect to the broadband hamnet nodes wirelessly you have to have a third party um, wireless access point and that's what I use those for now if if what you wanted to do is just give one uh, from your Netgear router if you've only got a single LAN port assigned uh, then you can plug that up to a standard um, hub or a switch um, and all the extra ports will work you know something even as cheap and maybe not something like this. Um, I just remembered something about uh, this this really old one I've got here. Hang on, I'm trying to turn the light on. I believe this is only 10 megabit. Oh, years and years old. But uh, essentially, how do you connect uh, these tablet devices up to the broadband hamlet? Well, you'll need a, a third-party wireless access point. Now you can do this with an old router. Um, if you've got an old wireless router, then you can do that. Um, remember, go into the 
the settings of the router and turn off the DHCP server in the router once you've done all your wireless settings for you know for your own devices to connect um, once you've done that once you've done your wireless settings then turn off the DHCP server in in the wireless router uh, so it doesn't conflict with the DHCP service that's running from your node and then hook it up to one of the LAN ports on the back to the LAN port uh, on on one of your nodes and then you can connect your devices wirelessly to this device which will connect it in turn up to the router and broadband hamlet node that you're using and your uh, tablet devices will get on the broadband hamlet service now this is really useful I'll cover this in a second video but uh, say you're um, running IP uh, you want to run a uh, an IP camera for the broadband hamlet an app on Google Play Store or Google Store Play Store whatever it's called and it's called IP webcam it's absolutely free you can download that put it on the tablet and once you've got it in there you've actually got a webcam it uses the camera on board your tablet device uh, stream out on an IP address and you don't have to play much, I mean you don't have to go get a huddle, I don't recommend the huddle, um, my backlight has gone out on that one. Um, this one, um, amazingly, I've had it open and I've nicked the battery and I found out that if I hook up to those uh, tiny little terminals there, right in the centre of the screen now, if I hook them up to uh, 3.7 volts, this thing starts up and it works absolutely fine. Uh, you think, <laughs> why has this guy got a uh, tablet in such a bad state? Well, this is broken mainly because the battery that was in it was completely duff and had to be taken out. I spent, including postage and packaging, a whopping £2.80 on, on this from eBay. It turns out, as long as I run it off from uh, 3.7 volts, it runs absolutely fine. So, a very good, cheap option. I'm going to say this, I probably got lucky with this. Chances are, if you could do buy a tablet that cheap, you might not get it working. But, you know, you never know. This really is potluck, and I think I got lucky with this one. Might make a good IP camera, uh, IP webcam camera. So... Gonna, let's talk about getting this device set up uh, on the uh, broadband hamlet. Essentially, this is DDWRT. I've um, had my pen, stuck it in the, the reset hole, 30 seconds. Uh, then you remove the power, uh, still holding the button in for 30 seconds more. And then you plug it back in while still holding the button down and wait for 30 seconds. Then you wait for a 30 seconds and then you can turn it off and back on again and it's all fully reset. I don't think I have to go through all that procedure with this little router. I think holding the button in at the back for 10 seconds when it's powered on is enough to reset it but I do the full recommended reset as per uh, DDWRT website. The other reason I use DDWRT is you can go into the advanced settings for the wireless and what you can do is place one of your devices as far as uh, far away from your, the access point that you'd want and then go into the advanced settings for wireless and keep dropping the power down until you sit at the other end has uh, still got sufficient signal but uh, essentially this device move it to a channel that's away from your uh, broadband ham net um, this is going go up on channel 11 maybe channel 12 if I can get away with it and it's gonna have the power turned down so uh, turn it down just to a level that's sufficient All right. the next screen you see should be um, setting this up and this would be useful not just for connecting up tablets and things like that but uh, if you are showing your broadband hamnet system off to other people you're at an event or something and you want to 
other people, other hams that turn up to be able to connect to the broadband ham net on their own phones and have a browse around and uh, maybe spark a little bit of interest there. It, it's also a good idea to have a, a, a wireless spot that they can have a look at um, and then you can talk about the services and they can sit there and try it while, while you're talking about it. So um, uh, that might be quite good for demonstration purposes. So, all right. Let's get on with this configuration. Right, I do apologise for the uh, terrible audio. I don't have a working external mic at the moment. I thought I had uh, a working microphone. I plugged it up, went and done a test recording, and all I could hear was a uh, 50 hertz main buzz. So I'm having to use the laptop's internal microphone and that strange sound that you can hear in the background that's the PC fan in fact that may even speed up and slow down at times so I'll get on with the video first we need to go to the device what I've done is I've plugged the Ethernet in straight to the DDWRT router so it'll be on 192.168.1.1 there it is it's asking me to set router username Let me do that again. Make sure I type that in right. So just bear with me, I'm just changing the password on this on the router. First thing we want to do is going to set up. Right, now when you're into setup, what you want to do is you'll see that you've got the IP address. Now that means it's going to use a fixed IP address and it will stay on there. And as that IP address okay. is outside of the broadband ham net network, that's fine, that will be ignored. Um, but just remember, keep it the default address because. Um, if once you've disabled the DHCP server, which is this setting here, I'll do that now, your computer won't get an address from the router on its own, so you can just, just use that magic reset button on the back. Um, but uh, pretty much don't have to change anything to do with that, that would be ignored um, by broadband handnet. Uh, it won't ask your broadband hamnet node for an IP address because it's not doing DHCP. This will just park it nicely out of the way. And DHCP server disabled. Okay. So when you've done that, click save, go back to the bottom and apply settings. And then you go into wireless. And that's set as an access point. Right, we're going to set this to 2E0 PT minus BBHN. Okay. Now, my broadband hamnet nodes are on channel 1. So I'm going to move these up out of the way. I'm going to stick with channel 11 for now. I've tried using channel 12, but my, my phone device my telephone, my mobile phone doesn't like it so I'll stick with channel 11 I don't know what the problem is with that but uh, I'll stick with channel 11 um, we'll stick with the 20 MHz bandwidth and we hit save and apply now to stop non-hams getting on the broadband ham net um, as this isn't a broadband hamnet node, it's just a wireless device operating under normal wireless conditions. Um, we can set security here. Um, so, this is only security over wireless into your broadband hamnet LAN port. From that point, once you're through the node, you're actually using the, the Wi-Fi side of the node 
um, under your license conditions that can't be encrypted but uh, for your devices to protect broadband hamnet from unauthorized use uh, when you're doing an access point yes you can set up some security but uh, you can't have the security outside of the ISN laws and that's if you are doing this uh, don't go turning your power up to crazy levels if if anything like I said earlier you'll want to turn the power down so I'm just going to go over this and uh, do WPA to personal wait for it to load up I'm going to support both and I'm going to give it a password okay. hit save and apply the settings so now we have security between your wireless devices and the LAN ports of your broadband hamlet nodes using traditional ISM equipment so there's no worries there about using the encryption at that point if anything you're protecting the broadband hamlet once you're on the broadband hamlet obviously keep it uh, channel 6 or below within the UK to keep your transmissions within the amateur band and then it goes out and uses the broadband hamlet system which coexists with other Wi-Fi devices quite well as I've found the only other thing I'm going to do here is if I go to wireless advanced settings uh, somewhere down here I have got TX power which is set to 71 milliwatts which is the default you, you can, it says you can set it from a range of 1 to 251 milliwatts don't trust the scale as being actual milliwatts if you set it to 5 uh, you might find that you're you're not even poking out that so the scale is a little, little bit off but I'm going to reduce mine I found out that mine uh, quite adequately covers my location on 40 so a huge reduction in the uh, TX power that gives me just less than full signal just out outside my property so um, more than enough power and I'm reducing the power on the channel far away from my node try and reduce the uh, RF around my node um, can't say for the same for you neighbours and all that lot but Wi-Fi systems do seem to coexist very well so I'm going to hit the apply settings and that's it we're done that is that part of it uh, setting up the wireless router done uh, all I need to do now is relocate it in the other room uh, plug the la one of the LAN ports not the WAN port but one of the LAN ports of this DDR WRT router and plug that into my switch which in turn is connected to one of the LAN ports uh, of my broadband hamlet nodes anything you hook up to the wireless access points that is hooked into the LAN port on your node will become part of the broadband hamlet network now if you're going to have quite a number of devices you might do well to go into um, your node go into the setup of your node um, we can see is I've got five hosts uh, direct connection on this one and if you go into DHC people you might notice I'm pretty close to filling up all those five so if you need more than five then you can actually change that and in fact I will do that now on mine so I'll hit the save changes now when I hit save changes it will run through a whole bunch of scripts so if it looks like it's not doing anything uh, just sit back and wait for it it will do something and the chances are this is going to require a reboot it will tell me whether it needs a reboot or not but um, this may require a reboot I try not to do that with this unit um, here you go, configuration saved, reboot is required for changes to take effect so um, 
I am sorry to the stations hooked up to my tunnel server. Um, it's about to go down for 30 seconds. So that is how you increase the number of um, devices that you can hook up to a particular node. So I've just incre increased it from um, five available IP addresses up to 13. And um, that's uh, more than enough. Next video, I'll hook up uh, one of my tablet devices to the third party wireless access point that we've just set up, plugged into the LAN ports of the broadband handnet node, and I'll bring up uh, my local. Right, now we get onto the part where we uh, connect our uh, wireless device. Now, check wireless is turned on. Go into your um, settings. Hit done. You connect up your device via the wireless and put that in. Then, what you can do is you can exit out. Load up a browser. Let's rotate the screen. Come on, turn around. And we'll go HTTP colon forward slash forward slash local node. Oops. I can already see it there, but it doesn't matter. Colon eight o eight o. So I type that into the address. Hit go, and there we go. I'm on my tunnel server. So. So I can see all the services there and I can probably access them as well. Let's go to G4 ELM 200, no, ELM 30 and click on the cluster link. There you go. So I am pulling information from over the broadband hamnet.